Did you guys hear the? Did it say it's recording? Yep. Okay, guys. Uh, Zillow Flex Weekly Training. Today's Thursday, November fourth. Welcome. Um, we're gonna start off today by listening back to a phone call. I'm gonna pick one randomly, and we're gonna listen to it, give some feedback, and then I got a couple uh, things to go over for our weekly reporting. Let me share my screen. Contacts. Sorry, inbox. Let's see who's going to be the winner today. Hey, Lee, we've got the 1.7. That's in his uh, That's in his neighborhood, too, in Evergreen. 1.7. Actually, let me look at this before. Before I pick a call, I just want you guys to see what's coming in. Uh, Luis got a 1.7. Maudi got a 450. Blanca, this was a text from someone. Alfredo, 159. I don't know what that is. 569, 470, 1.3, Emmanuel, 915, 999, 880, 498. This is all in the last couple of days, guys. Um, 648. I saw someone got like a 2.8 million the other the other day. Um, so don't sleep on Zillow Flex, guys. There are some leads in there. There are some good ones. We've adjusted the zip codes. Occasionally, you're going to get these little random low ones, but most of them, the way we've adjusted the zip codes was so that we can maintain um, higher price points. So I'm going to play back this call. Mauricio, you are in the hot seat. Let's listen to this call, and we will critique it. Benjamin. <clears throat> Hey, Benjamin, uh, so I see that you want to tour uh, once in Tarragon, right? Yes. Okay, got it, got it. When are you available to tour this one? I'd love to do it Saturday morning, if possible. Saturday morning, awesome. Okay, so let, let me check in with the seller right now to see if that uh, day does work. Uh, Saturday morning, uh, what's a good time Saturday morning? I had selected 10 on the site. That would be perfect, but, you know. Okay, awesome. Okay, yeah, so Saturday, 10 a.m.? Yep. Awesome, awesome. Okay, sounds good. Uh, and if for whatever reason this time is not available, is there a better day and time for you? I mean, ideally it would be anytime Saturday or Sunday morning. Either one works for me, but you know, somewhere in between the, you know, nine to eleven range would be good. Got it, got it. Okay, sounds good. So yeah, let me see if I can get that taken care of for us. Um, and then I know you're looking out here in Morgan Hill. Is this the only area you're looking into? No, um, my wife works in Cupertino and I work remotely, so we're pretty open across the Bay Area. Um, just looking to see, you know, what's out there. Okay, awesome, awesome. Okay, so let me check in with them. I'll go ahead and text you just to give you an update um, to see what time we are going to go touring. Um, and then aside from that, uh, how, how quickly are you guys wanting to be moved into your next home? I mean, our, our current lease expires in February, so we're not in a major rush, but if we find the right property, I know properties are flying off the market right now. We obviously would mm -hmm. make the move earlier, so, um, so sometime in the next uh, three to four months, but again, we're, we, we feel very comfortable pulling the trigger early if, if we find the right place, and if not, we're happy to stay in our current location so we you know find what we're looking for. Awesome, awesome, okay. All good stuff. So yeah, let me check in with them. I'm gonna go ahead and give you a call in about 30 minutes to confirm everything. Um, and are there any questions you have for me now that we're on the phone? No nope. answer. No, I'm just uh, okay. excited to see this property. Looks, looks awesome. Okay, so we'll we'll talk soon. Um, and then, by the way, you will be receiving a survey from Zillow. If you could do me a huge favor, just leave me great remarks. I'd really appreciate it. Sound fair? Yeah, no problem. Yes. No uh, problem. Okay, we'll, we'll we'll talk soon, Benjamin. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Is Maudie on the call? All right. Let's give it up for Maudie first for taking the call. Let's go. All right. So let's uh, – feedback. So what I'm – here's what I want to grade the feedback on, right? Because I want to keep it within the context of what we're supposed to be doing, the ALM. A stands for appointment. L stands for location. M stands for motivation. And then, so that's the basic, right? You got to hit the ALM on those calls. But on top of that, we talked about layering in other 
questions to build rapport and kind of going a little deeper on, you know, on what the client's looking for. Um, so let's give some feedback, guys. Um, what did you guys notice? How did he do? Anything that stood out to you, um, both positive, maybe something constructive? Let's open up the floor. Don't be shy. Sahara, I'm calling you. <laughs> Give it to me. Um, he hit. Give me that. He hit all the. I feel like he hit all the points. The A, the L, the M. I feel like maybe with that client, they were like giving you a little bit extra. Maybe you could have gave back a little bit more rapport. Maybe like joked with them a little bit more, just because it seemed like they were pretty like talkative. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of rare in my experience. Okay, give a little bit more, a little bit more rapport. Okay, what else? Someone unmute and give me some feedback. Itzel, Don't be shy, guys. What do you got, Itzel? Um, let's see. <laughs> I think he did good. I don't know if he mentioned his name at the beginning. So I don't know if the client knows what his name is. Um, but I think he did well. He asked him um, all the questions that he needed. Maybe he should have um, asked him what kind of home he was looking for. Um, gave him maybe some options while out there touring properties. Um, and yeah. Okay. So we don't know if he heard his name. It kind of cut off a little bit in the beginning. I didn't catch if he said his name or not because the recording was a little bit cut off. But um, so, yeah, you're saying that you don't know if he said his name or if he even let said who he was at the end or if he gave him any other options. Like, hey, while we're out there, I'm going to pull up a couple other homes that we can tour. Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody else? Feedback. Let's take one more and then I'll give you some feedback. AJ, what you got, bro? No, I mean, I think it was good. I think uh, when they had like the topic of conversation, he was telling them like where they worked and stuff like that. Oh, Cupertino. And um, no, I mean, I think overall, I, I think Mountie is good at what he does. Um, and <laughs> I just always think that it, it's funny how everybody just cues in the, uh, you, you, I, I can always gauge a conversation when you, hey, by the way, Zillow is going to give you, you know, is going to ask you for a survey, hoping you can give me good remarks. And they're like, yeah, sure. When they give you like cool feedback like that, it's going to be a cool person to talk to rather than like, you know, some phone calls where they're like, okay, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I mean, overall, it's good. I think, uh, you know, the reciprocating feedback, like when they say, when you say that weird part at the end, which I freaking hate saying, but love it now, um, you know, when they say that and they say it like an excited way, like, you know, it's actually, I feel, I feel like personally when they reply like that, they're actually going to pan out rather than like someone who just says like, sure. And then you're like, this person's not going to leave me a review, even though I fucking crushed the call. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Um, let me give you some feedback. And it actually, what's great about this call is that it actually leads into the notes that I was going to go over um, with you guys. So let me share my screen because this is a good segue. And this is exactly what I talked, what we talked to our growth advisor about yesterday. Um, so as you guys know, we meet with our growth advisor every Wednesday. We meet with them. We give them reporting on kind of what we go over, what happened in this last week. He'll listen to some calls. He'll give us some you know, updates on what's going on with Flex. And we'll usually try to find you know, the tweaks and stuff of what we got to do. And we, our whole topic yesterday was just kind of breaking down the ALM and um, how to have better quality conversations. So breaking down the ALM, and then I'll, I'll tie this into kind of some feedback from Audi. Um, Going for the appointment is great, right? We know the goal is to, is to get the appointment. But the other goal of the call is to develop rapport with the client. And that's just as equal, if not greater, than just booking the appointment. The reason why is if we just go for the appointment and we just hurry up and kind of rush and get off the phone call and there's no rapport built, that makes it way easier for that client to ghost you, to cancel, to reschedule, to not be committed to that appointment. When rapport is built, it develops trust. And when the client trusts and feels like, hey, man, this is someone I can, you know, see myself working with. 
the client is going to gauge, you know, to some extent, whether they would want to work with you or not by that initial conversation from the vibe and the energy that you give them. Uh, like, all right. They kind of make it like a, they judge you a little bit, right? Kind of judge the book by its cover. Like if this is someone that I can communicate with or talk to, right? So he did a good job of getting the appointment, right? He booked the appointment. And that's, the, that's honestly the easiest part of this whole entire conversation is booking the appointment because they already inquired on the property and it's pretty much like, okay, when can you see it? Everyone is doing that here at a high level already. We're, we're, we have a great appointment rate. The next part, guys, what we need to go deeper on is the L and the M, location and motivation. If you do the location and motivation part of the conversation properly, you'll create more rapport. And this is what we need to go deeper on, right? So for example, um, what I forgot the guy's name, Jeff, I'm going to say Jeff. Um, Jeff, hey, this property's in Morgan Hill. Is that the only area you're looking in? And you did that, right? And he started telling you about he works in Cupertino, uh, or his wife works in Cupertino. He works remotely. How could we have taken that part a little further? How could we have built more rapport on that? What could have been a follow-up question we could have asked him after he told you that the wife worked in Cupertino and he worked remotely? Um, what do you guys do? Bam, exactly. What do you guys, do? oh, awesome. What do you do? Right? And then he probably would have said, oh, I'm in tech, I'm in sales, or, yeah, I work from home. Oh, okay, you're working from home. Oh, man, how's that been treating you, man? You know, this whole COVID thing. We do a lot of stuff from home, too. And then what happens is now you're talking about, you're, you get to know this guy, and you guys are now, like, you're away from just buying a house, but you're now relating to someone on a person-to-person -person level. And when you can relate to someone on a person-to-person -person level, that now creates trust, credibility, you know, and then wanting to be more likely to come meet you, right? So. Did, he, did Maori ask the location? Yeah, he hit the ALM, but did he go layers deep on the location and build off of that, right? So the A, the L, and the M is just the bullet points that you got to hit. It's your job to go deeper and branch off of that and layer questions that are going to build more rapport, right? So that was an opportunity that Maori could use to build more rapport. Um, motivation. Maori said, hey, how soon are you guys looking to, to get into a home, right? And the guy said, oh, we, the great thing is the guy was open. He said, he said that a lease in whatever, what, February, or he was willing to break the lease if the right opportunity came up. Um, what could have been a follow-up question that Maori could have asked after that? Someone else, volunteer. I'm going to call on you. Luis, you there, bro? Right here. Okay, what could have been a follow-up question that Maori could have asked after the guy told him that he has a lease and he's willing to break it? Um, that's awesome. So, you know, basically all that's left to do is find you the right property, right? That wasn't. That was kind of like a statement with a, like a right at the end. Like, a, but what would have been a follow-up question to kind of peel the layer back and get the guy to open up a little bit more? um we could potentially ask uh well we can't talk about mortgage and stuff um if he said he's willing to break his lease you know how many kids do you have <laughs> you need your family well what about what about the one something related to that right how about let me get hold on, hold on. where do you rent or, or well, one, one of the ones I'm going to get. And again, yeah, so one of the ones that I use, and I don't know if it fits perfectly in this scenario, but one of the things I ask is like, okay, cool. So, you know, you're, you know, so if we find you the right property in the right location and, you know, has the right terms, you're willing to purchase sooner than later. Is that correct? I, I don't know, you know, again, it just, it has to flow with that conversation. Uh, but that's one of the lines that I use all the time. And I'm training these guys to use this, have that, you know, one of those, that's one of the tools that you're going to want to have. And if you don't have that, you need to practice that statement or that question all the, you know, a hundred times. So it comes out naturally. 
Yeah, so that's that's definitely one angle, right? You're you're pretty much reaffirming what the guy said and, and what Jason is saying, right? The guy told you he's willing to break his lease and you're basically repeating it back to him so you're on the same page. But how about like, how can we create more conversation off that? Like, oh, okay, well, hey, that, that sounds good. Where do you guys live at now? What area are you guys renting? At? How do you feel about renting? Yeah. You know, how do you pay? You know, you know what uh have you guys you know tell me about your experience so far have you guys looked at any homes you know so far is this your first time buying a home is this your first time buying a home you know you know how do you guys feel about the whole buying process if i were to find you a home today would you be willing and able to write an offer no so what you're doing is you're trying to sell him on the phone right and this is where this is where you guys got to be careful right because right now you are creating a relationship. The appointment's already set. You do the selling when you meet them in person, right? On the phone, your job is to build rapport, build some trust, build some credibility. But if you go in like, hey, if I find you the right home and this is now, are you willing to buy right now? You sound like a salesperson, right? So, so but naturally, us as salespeople, we wanna do that, right? But you gotta be a Jedi, right? That will come later. Don't shoot your shot yet, right? Keep that close. You shoot at the right time. It's not the right time when you barely met the guy and you're already trying to take him out on a date, right? You need, he's not going to sign a contract yet. So you need to build more rapport with them. You need to ask more questions. You need to get the guy to open up. And one of the things is you got to take your time, right? Like don't try to get on the appointment and then like get the appointment and try to hurry up and get off the phone call. And that's one of the tweaks that we have to make because initially, I know we were saying, keep the conversation short, um, but we want to expand a little bit on the conversation. Uh, hold on, Jason, Jason has something. The other, the other thing that I capitalize on is I asked them if they have, like, if they have little ones, if they have kids, you have kids that go to school in that area, you know, so I also try to figure out, you know, is it just them buying or who's going to be buying? And that's one of the questions I always ask. Oh, well, do you have little ones? You know, are they in school? You know, are schools important to you? So then you can get a sense of their fa family dynamic. Yep, those are, that's, that's a good one also. Here's a universal question that you could ask on both the buying and selling side that can build rapport. What's important to you when buying a home or when buying your first home? It's a general question. But every person you ask is going to give you a different answer. And then you're going to be able to build off that answer, right? When someone's selling their home, what's important to you when selling your home or going through this process? I want you guys to, to, to train yourselves to ask that question on every single phone call you do. What's important to you? Because when I ask you what's important to you, what does that tell you? That you care that I care and people are not going to care until they know you care. Right. So on every single call, you can say in a different way or whatever, but you should somehow incorporate what's important to you. What are your must haves? What's important to you about this location? You know, what did you like most about this property? Because that's going to, if you ask what I like most about this property, then that's going to open them up to telling you kind of what their criteria is, right? What's important to you when buying a home? So now you went from like this guy or girl that I clicked the button and they answered and it was like a door opener. You went to now someone who cares about my situation and someone who's looking out for my best interest and someone that is potentially going to advise me on one of the biggest purchases or transactions of my life. By just asking, what's important to you? What's important to you? What's important to you about this home? What, what did you like most about Morgan Hill, right? You know, have you guys, what about the area you live in now? Have you guys looked into that, you know? What are some of your must-haves, right? What's important to you when buying this next home? What are some of your must-haves, right? So we got to go a little deeper so that you can sound like someone who is all about service and advising and all that instead of serve someone that they just called to set up a appointment it's almost like if you call your dentist and the, the lady answers the phone yeah i want to schedule a cleaning oh great when can you come in i got friday at two available okay friday at two okay great i got you down for friday at two you'll send you an email confirmation bye like 
you're just a you're just an appointment setter at that point but what if that person was like oh like how's your day going today like what brings you into the dentist right is there anything going on that i should let the doctor know or the dentist know right you have a toothache or anything is this just going to be for a cleaning you have anything you got to look at how long has that been going on for you know are you have are you experiencing any pain right now i don't know i'm just making shit up i'm not even a dentist right but the same concept can apply to any conversation that you have. Like if you ask follow-up questions that build off that initial answer, that initial question, now you're going to create a lot more rapport with these clients. And then their perception of you is going to be like, oh, shoot, like this guy seems pretty cool. Like, man, this guy cares, right? Okay. I got a good vibe off this guy or this girl or whoever. All right. So I want you guys to think now. I'm not trying to hurry up and get off the phone and set the appointment. I'm trying to hit the ALM, like those are the pillars, but I'm trying to build off all of those things and ask follow-up questions that are going to get us kind of conversating and laughing and joking and, and them opening, opening up more so that the quality of the conversation increases and the likelihood of them meeting you increases. Because if, if, if I have an appointment set with someone who cares about me, who's an advisor, who really took the time to ask me, you know, how my day is going or what's important to me, I think I'm going to show up to this meeting. But if all they did was just set the time and they'll confirm with me and like they hurried up and got off the phone, well, it wasn't really memorable enough for me to like want to go to that appointment. It was like it came, it went, it could cancel, who cares, right? So some of you guys are doing a great job of this. Some of you guys, this is the part you need to work on, right? We're going deeper because, again, I know we only were ALM yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. And, we're, and, and this was the feedback too. In the beginning, we just said, stick to the ALM. And that's kind of what Dilla was training you on. But we have found now that they do that as kind of a general thing to make sure that everyone's doing that at the minimum. But we have found now that we need to add more of our own flavor and more of what has already worked, right? So we gotta hit the ALM, but we also gotta add in like the rapport, the personality and all that stuff, the layers to it. And if that means the conversation goes longer, then that's actually a good thing, right? So I want you guys to slow down, take a breather. You're gonna get the appointment. They already called, they already identified the property, the appointment's gonna happen. Now I want you to think, how can I leave this conversation with them feeling great, with them feeling like I care, with me asking all the right questions, with me finding out a little bit more about this client so that when I do meet with them, I got a bunch of shit that I can offer them and I got a bunch of shit that I can talk to them about. I got other properties I can show them. I now know what they're looking for so I can deliver a lot more value and I can talk about a lot more things because now I have data, I have information on them. This is going deeper. And if you do this on every single one of your appointments, not just Zillow Flex, I promise you, you will convert more of your, of, of your leads into, into appointments and more of them into deals. If you just like make it a point now to now service every one of your clients this way, you will close more deals and you get more referrals. You'll meet with more. You'll meet with more. You'll close more. They'll refer you more. You'll get a better review. And it'll it'll compound your results. All right, a um, couple more points. This one right here, this is a good one right here. So in a perfect world, you're gonna do all that, right? You're gonna you're gonna ask all those questions, but sometimes you're gonna get someone. Well, maybe ain't having it. Maybe they're straight to the point. Maybe you, maybe Jason is the guy that called you. I'm going to use Jason as an example. Would everyone agree that Jason is a pretty uh, straightforward type of guy? That's just his personality, right? You know, he's no fluff, no BS, do the work, make it happen. And I'm probably the opposite of Jason. That's why we work well together. We complement each other, right? But being able to read the client engage the conversation to know if you can do a little bit more or if you got to pull back a little bit more is important. So you have to be able to think 
on these conversations, right? And read the client. If the guy ain't talking much and he ain't opening up and you start just, you know, telling him what a beautiful day it is outside, <laughs> it's going to be a mismatch. You're going to, you're going to lose them, right? <laughs> Look at Jason. Jason, I don't give a shit about what the weather is outside. Are you, can you get me in the damn house or not? I'm, how many offers are on this house? This ain't my first rodeo, right? But you can tell, right? You can tell when you talk to someone, like, are they the talkative type? Are they the more quiet type? You know, or whatever. So you gotta, you gotta know when the pull, when the push, and when the pull. When to add a little bit more flavor, when to pull some flavor back, right? Um, if the client is engaging, like that client was, where he was opening up and he was, then you gotta do a little bit more on that one, right? If the client's shortened to the point, well, you might got to shorten your script a little bit, shorten your spiel, still ask the questions. Yeah. You still want to layer it. You still want to hit all those points. That doesn't mean you don't ask those, right? You still want to add the layers, but maybe don't be so elaborate and fancy and, you know, maybe keep it to like one layer question per point instead of five, right? Because then you could bore someone if you're like, so where do you work? What do you do? How long you been there? Right? What do you like about your job? And they're like, dude, get to, get to the point, bro. I'm not looking at the house or not, right? <laughs> but if you got those clients where they're like, oh, I'm a, I'm a senior marketing manager and I love people and all this stuff. And, you know, yeah, we have this awesome event. And like, go down that fucking rabbit hole with them, right? Because then now you're going to speak their language, right? So you got to know when to go and when to push and pull a little bit. Um, and also keep in mind that some clients may be busy right? At the time you called them and you can kind of tell, right? You hear a bunch of shit going on in the background and you're trying to ask them how the weather is in Arkansas, it, then you're going to miss them, right? It's noisy. They just want to book the appointment, right? So also keep in mind, some clients may be busy. They may not have time to talk, but maybe once you meet them in person, maybe now they're, they're in the zone, they're focused and now they can talk. Um, so personality types, right? being aware that there are different personalities. You have like, you're really like dominant, like straightforward type of people. Jason's a great example of that. You have, you're really high eyes, like your, your talkers, people who just love to talk and love to chat, sit there and chop it up with you. I would say Herbin is probably a good example of someone who's a, who's a talker, right? Like Herbin will sit there and chop it up with you. That's just his personality, right? He loves talking, he loves being in the moment. Jason's like, dude, I got somewhere to go. Hurry the fuck up, right? Um, and I'm using these extremes, right? So you guys can differentiate. You got your, uh, your analysts. Emmanuel is the analyst, <laughs> right? <laughs> Emmanuel is the analyst who is, wants to know the depreciation rate of <laughs> the crime rate. What's the list price to sales price ratio, in my opinion, of this property? How many offers do you anticipate? Would you think it'd be an effective strategy to have a contingency on this? That's Emmanuel, right? Like he's the freaking analyst, right? Like he's the thinker. How you know, many employees else? are coming into the city this year? <laughs> What's the average gross income? Right. You, know. you know, so, I mean, those are probably like your three kind of like main types of personality. And you'll have like some that are a mix of, of, of some of those, but it's important that you know like how to distinguish those because you tailor your conversation style depending on the personality that you're reading from them, right? If they're straightforward, straight to the point, you gotta be a little more straightforward to the point. If they're chopping your ear off, chop it up with them. If they're asking you stats, be careful about stats because if you don't know what you're talking about, you might get yourself in trouble, but, you can also like say, hey, I'm going to write all these points down. And when we meet, I'm going to have these answers for you, right? Is there any other thing that's important to you that I should prepare for our meeting? What graphs should I bring to our showing, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> so this is where you got to adapt personality type. And I'm telling you this, guys, if you can learn this and you can learn to think while you're talking and be aware of these things and adapt your sales conversion is gonna go through the roof because this applies to all walks of life, right? Sales, other stuff, right? There's this applies to, to definitely your sales, right? Cause you're dealing with different personalities every single day.
the mistake that a lot of people make is that they don't adapt and they only speak their own personality and you lose people because of that, right? Because if you're not willing to kind of like speak the language of the other person, then it's gonna be a, a personality mismatch, right? And it's, it's gonna be hard for you to be as effective with that client. So you either gotta decide, do I adapt a little bit? Like, do I be a chameleon? Or maybe this ain't the right client for me because we're just not vibing well. But you know what? You'd be a great client, Mr. Engineer, for Emmanuel. Emmanuel on my team actually is, is he's the, the stats guy. I want to bring him into the, into the appointment and him and Emmanuel hit that off and you guys close the deal and you guys split the commission. That's the great thing is you have options, right? All right, got a couple more points and we're almost wrapped up. Last, time, last thing right here is transfer of enthusiasm. We talked about this this morning. Any of you guys that were on our call, uh, the uh, role play this morning, it's a little phrase called transfer of enthusiasm. And this is what our, our advisor was. He was giving us an example of his sales coach, his, uh, his marketing manager or whatever, as Zillow gave him this phrase, transfer of enthusiasm. Who can tell me what transfer of enthusiasm means? Or take a guess what we mean by that. Would that be like mirror matching like their enthusiasm with like your enthusiasm? Or is it like sound excited? You're their hype man. So if you're excited, uh, they'll get excited. There you go. And this is what we talked about with Brian this morning. So it's not necessarily mirroring and matching is um, that's mirroring and matching, right? Like if someone's talking low and you're talking low with them. But what happens, remember, guys, is the only thing that these people have to gauge, right, is, is the conversation because it's over the phone, right? You're not in person. There's no body language, anything like that, right? So it's important that you hype them up a little bit. Now, you don't want to hype them too much because, like, if you have a person that's super quiet and you're, like, fucking loud as hell, but you want to go, like, a step higher than what they are, right? I would say a step higher than what they are. Right. Like you want to get them excited about me, about meeting with you. Right. Because the energy that you bring on that call, you're transferring that energy. So if you if you're really low or you're like you answered the call or you're laying down and you could tell like you sound like really like no energy, they're going to hear that. You know, so I don't know what Maori was doing when he answered that call. Were you driving, bro? Were you laying down? Were you sitting on the couch? Well, I was in the closet. He was in the closet, right? Well, the <laughs> uh, right, come out of the closet. Like come out. Was, uh... come out of the <laughs> back room. Oh, you're in the back room. The back yeah, the back room, bro. <laughs> right, that's that's what I meant. Um, so we we have to be conscious, guys, of how we're talking, our tonality, our voice. It's like our Tuesday meeting, right? When I hold a Tuesday meeting, if I come in, oh, hey guys, positive focus. You guys wouldn't really be that, you know, enthused and you guys wouldn't really have a great time at the meeting, right? But I make it a point, like, to bring the energy, to get you guys up. If I see you guys falling asleep, I freaking call on you because I want to wake everybody up, right? Like, my job is to transfer my enthusiasm to you guys on our meetings. And even right now, right? Like, my job is to, to bring it today so that you guys can be hyped up and pay attention. And some of you guys still don't pay attention, but... That's the job, right? And that's your job as the agent for that buyer or seller is to transfer that enthusiasm and keep the momentum up and keep the excitement going, right? Even when shit goes wrong, even if the house is not available to show, there's a way that you can say it where you still make a, a, a negative into a positive. Like, hey, you call them back. Hey, uh, hey, Jeff, I just want to catch back up with you, man. I'm excited to meet with you. I checked in with the seller. Unfortunately, that one is not available, but you know what? There's two other ones I found in the neighborhood that are pretty close to that description. I think you would really love to see them. I set up, I went ahead and set up the appointments for tomorrow at 10, like you had, had suggested. Um, let's go take a look at these, at least just kind of see what's out there. I think it'd be a good exercise for both of us. Sound fair? Right? Or if you're like, Jeff, yeah, bro. Uh, it's not available, man. Uh, <laughs> sold, bro. 
I wish you would have called me like two days sooner, man. Like, as soon as you lose. <laughs> like, if you sound like that when you're delivering that news, right? What did you do to the energy of that conversation, the energy of that relationship? Killed it, right? Yeah, Jeff, uh, it's not going to work out, bro. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, you don't want to do that, right? Um, <laughs> it sounds like you're telling him he's doomed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you're like, I hate goodbyes. <laughs> right? And then hellos. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me it's you right <laughs> no it's not you it's the property it's the property it's not you jeff it's the property man you know uh, but think about it right think about how now this can apply to other areas of our business right when their offer doesn't get accepted or when a home is not available to show or when they got beat out you know or when the seller countered them back with something crazy, right? And they're like, what the hell, right? It's important that you come out and you deliver that news in a way that's gonna still keep them going and still keep them motivated and not like just bring them down, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to be aware of the energy that you are transferring on a phone call, in person, at the showing, what have you, in any type of interaction you know, with your clients and even with your coworkers too, right? You're, you're transferring energy all the time. And all of you guys have the ability to influence someone in a positive way or a negative way. It's really hard for someone, it's not impossible, but it's really hard for someone to be down when you're like making everything good and everything positive, right? Like even if they want to be pissed that the house wasn't available, but you're like, killing them with kindness and you're making them laugh and you're like man but don't worry i got these other two jeff we're gonna get you into a property i promise let's go look at these i still want to meet you in person you sound like a really cool guy um i'm excited for you guys you know your first time buying a home i think we should go look at these actually the other one is uh has a better backyard than that first one that we were looking at i, I think you're gonna like it in my opinion it's in a better location too i got 10 a.m tomorrow i already booked these i just went ahead and booked them let's go meet tomorrow at 10 sound good and now you took that, what could have been a negative of that home that they inquired on, that they only wanted to see that one, but you kept them alive because you freaking transferred that energy and that enthusiasm. And now you're showing them two other homes and now you write an offer on one of those and get it accepted. Right? So remember guys, these leads, the Zillow Flex, the Red Fins, the Off City, whatever lead, all that is, that's just the opportunity to get that person on the phone or in front of you. That's the opportunity for you to, for them to enter your world, right? It's now what you do with that opportunity and the energy you bring and the value you bring and all that stuff that you bring to the table, that's going to dictate how that goes and what the results are. Just because they clicked on a property, and it's not available. That's usually what happens anyways, right? Most of the time, the first property that someone picks, that's not the home they end up buying, correct? When someone walks into an open house, they usually don't buy that home anyways, right? Like just, that just got them in the door. A lot of times they don't end up buying that home because there's a gazillion offers anyways, right? So it's, it's the relationship that you guys got to build and then show them like you're the one for them and then go from there and, and, and help them achieve their goals. Uh, I think that's it, guys. This was a lot. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, let's quickly go around. A couple. Let me get some feedback from you guys. Um, whoever wants to mute. What was your biggest takeaway today? I think identifying. Um who you're talking to is really important, not only for Zillow Flex, but just like in life and prospecting, right? Because when you're, when you're out there and our job, like it never stops, right? Every, every person you talk to, you're prospecting. It's really important that you're able to identify that right away and be able to adapt, right? Yep. To what you're comfortable with. I think that's really important just in sales in general. And to add, to add to what you just said, is your perception of value 
is not always someone else's perception of value. And what I mean by that is whatever you're spitting out or whatever information you're talking about, depending on the person you're talking to, they may not care about that. So that's why it's important to understand how to read people by asking questions and kind of gauging body language, tonality, their responses to try to quickly figure out, okay, I'm dealing with this type of person. I'm dealing with this type of person because you may be offering him, you know, ice cream sundaes and he's a yogurt guy, but you know, you got the best ice cream sundaes and like, no dude, you got to try this ice cream sundae. And he's like, bro, I don't fucking care about ice cream. I'm a yogurt guy, yogurt lamb, baby. Just using that as an example, right? Like, just because you're saying something you think it's good, that doesn't mean they think it's good. Or that they understand what you're even talking about. Yes. I had to learn early in my career in PRG that like people don't give a fuck about stats. <laughs> like I brought up a, a chart and then Jason was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> Jason's like, what? what the fuck do you need that? Like, Well, well, let's, 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 yeah, yeah. why? Why did Jason say that? Because Jason's personality is not the person who cares about charts. Yeah. He cares about results. Yeah. Right. And if you Imagine, know, what you're but in today's world, we have a lot of techies and we have yeah. a lot of people who want to see stats. So yeah. it just depends. It just goes back to reading the clients. Some people it really just want depends, those stats. Yeah. Usually even engineers don't give it, give a shit about charts either. So <laughs> they, they, they just want the house. So, and, yeah. and it goes back to what I told you. What's the important, what's the, what's the question that you should ask everybody? You want to see my chart? What's no. important to you? Yeah. What's important to you? Exactly. So the way you find out what information you have to give someone is by you asking them what's important to them. Yeah. It's the cheat sheet, right? You're getting the answer, ask the question, they give you the answers, and then you know what to say. That's that's all sales is, guys. Like this, I want to break it down to the simplest level. Don't make this hard for yourself. Just ask someone for the answer that they want to hear. What do you want? I want someone that I want someone that answers their phone late at night. I want someone that's going to be available, right? That, that's, you know, again, and then you're just going to counter back and let them know that you, you will be available. That's what we do. And if I'm not available, I have a team, right? If you're not just hiring Emmanuel, you actually get my whole team of 25 agents and five loan agents. Yep. I want someone who knows the market. Hey, I totally can appreciate that. You want someone who knows the market. Actually, what I do when I'm going to sit down with these, I'm going to pull up all the stats in the neighborhood. We're going to go deep and do a deep market analysis, right? And we're going to figure out the depreciation rates in that neighborhood and the list price to sales price ratio. And I'm going to start talking like Emmanuel, right? Um, in that case, that would apply, right? You might have someone that doesn't care about any of that. You know, I just want someone I can really trust. You know, I want someone who I know is going to take care of me and they're going to give me the right advice. You can trust me. Trust me. She don't trust you by you saying trust me. That usually does the opposite. I mean, you can lead them, you know, in that, in that scenario, I lead them back to my reviews. Well, hey, listen, my background, I've been doing this for the last 18 years. I have over 175 star reviews with Zillow. So, you know, let me go in and send you the link so you can see, you know, you can see what other clients, had, what, what their experience was with my process and how my team handled it. Yep, there's always an answer, right? Because we have all these tools at our disposal. We have the reviews, we have the stats, we have the availability, we have the team. I mean, you have like the, the top maybe five or six pain points for buyers and sellers that we are able to answer. The key for you is as a salesperson is to identify what is their pain point, what's important to them and how you have to uh, adapt to that, right? Tailor your conversation to fit what they're looking for, what's important to them. And the only way you get that is by asking, Mr. Buyer, what's important to you when you buy this, this first home? Mr. Seller, what's important to you when you get this home, when you're going through this home sale? Super simple, super effective. And they will tell you, and then from there, you get to peel the onion back and go deeper with that and ask why and how and you know all those things and be able to tell him how you're going to fit, you know, how you're going to accomplish that for them. Was this helpful? Let me get something.
Hold on. And again, guys, you know, I, I want to, you know, we, we looked at Zahara's call last week. And again, you know, we shared that information with our growth advisor, because again, when we saw that call, I can see Zahara could have went so much deeper in that conversation, but we were so restricting you guys. He calls it guardrails, putting these guardrails up. Now I want you guys to understand we've been having success. Zahara was having success with online leads. So we want to go ahead and let you guys know to go deeper to go ahead and build that rapport and ask those questions. The main thing is don't put any barriers up where they don't want to meet with you. Don't make them feel like they don't qualify. So just don't, that's the only barrier or that's the only guardrail that I'll put up is go deeper with them, build that rapport, go back to what we're used to doing, but don't, don't deter them from seeing that property because we do ultimately want to meet with them. The goal is face-to-face, -face, right? Whether that's in person or that's in, on Zoom, but the goal is face-to-face. -face. Uh, the, the house that they chose, that's just the carrot, right? That's just, the, that's just what got them to enter our world, right? But the goal is to get in front of them face-to-face -face. because when you're face-to-face, -face, you know, even meeting with them in person is preferred way more than Zoom, right? You meet with them in person, you go see the home. Even if you know they can't buy that home or it's not available or whatever, I would still go meet them, right? If you ask the right questions and you know they sound like a, like a decent prospect, I would still go meet them because from there, you can, you can build that rapport and then it's easier to go, okay, let's jump on a Zoom now, right? Let's do our consultation. But it's a lot harder to go from call to Zoom because Zoom is, is still, it's informal, you know? It's the new way of doing things, but it's not, it's not as effective as you meet someone in person and you guys get to share that laugh and the body language and all those different things. You know, that, that's the most effective way, which is good for us, right? Technology will never completely take us out. All right, guys, um, that's all I got for you guys. I hope you got some, some value out of this. Um, let's take those conversations further. The leads are coming in. We got 200 plus connections um, each month over the next three months. So I want you guys to think about that. Over these next three months, that's gonna be 600 connections that are being added to our pipeline. That's a lot of people, a lot, right? So in order for you to convert these at a high level, you need to bring your A game, you need to bring that value, you need to connect, you need to build rapport. And most importantly, you need to stay organized by tracking your numbers, updating your statuses, um, following up with your nurtures, because this can get real out of hand real quick if you got too many leads and you're just, you're not hitting them all, right? So utilize the team, utilize other team members, get help on your deals if you got too many. Um, otherwise they're, they're gonna end up buying or selling somewhere else. Uh, but good job, everybody. We're kicking ass. We're, we're, we're having a great start on Flex. We're outperforming the market. I think our last uh, data poll where we were at 111%. Um, so we're performing 11% above what the market's doing right now in terms of converting Zillow leads. Our goal is to get 125 or more, which is only like a couple more transactions each month in, 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 uh, in escrow. And we're there, guys. We're real close. So we're, we're really proud and um, really satisfied with the progress we've made so far. And we're, we're barely starting to catch our rhythm right now, right? It's only going to continue to get better. As everyone levels up, those conversions are going to go higher, which means more opportunity for everybody, more escrows, more clients being helped, and ultimately more commissions and more, more checks in your pocket, more referrals, all that stuff that comes with it. All right, guys, let's make it a great day. Let me get a picture for the Graham Zillow Flex crew. Hey, cheese. All right, guys, have a great day. Let me know if you need anything. Anyone want to see a chart? <laughs> <laughs>